Bringing this now, social grants empower women to be independent. Well, so says Professor Ingrid Willard from the Stellenbosch Business School. In an article published in the 2022 Women's Report, she also argues that it did not truly reflect that grants encourage teenage pregnancies. Professor Willard joins us now to discuss this even further. Prof, thank you so much for your time and good morning to you. Uh, let's uh, separate fact from, you know, myth here. It seems the public or popular public opinion maybe that social grants instead encourage teenage pregnancy they almost encourage a dependency on you know uh, the government and grants and doesn't really uh, open space for economic opportunities what is your research and data found so thank you um, so in this report we we try to to look at the, the real role of social grants in South Africa so about 18 million grants get paid out every month um, most of those are child support grants, and of the child support grant beneficiaries, 96% are women. Mm. So I think we, we, we don't often think about the fact that the grants are primarily an instrument um, that, that, is, that is aimed at giving money specifically to mothers. Um, and, and we know that mothers, in fact, use that money for the most part to put food on the table for their children and, um, and to pay things like school fees. So when the grant, when the child support grant was was designed, it was designed very much with that in mind of saying, if we give this grant primarily to women, do we not think that it will be used to the benefit of children? So that's mm. a key part of, of of what we talk about in the report. We talk about how how the money typically gets spent. Right, the right. Smaller part of the paper is to talk about these, you know, the, these these myths around um, disincentive effects. Mm. Uh, let's talk into, you know, the, 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 the strategy for government. I mean, for them, this was more of, you know, an anti-poverty fiscal strategy. Uh, mm. You say you've already spoken about also the gender, you know, uh, poverty cap with which the social grant uh, does intervene in. But uh, tell us more about, you know, government and why they wanted to have this system. Why it's instrumental for them? Right. So the, the, the grant system is, is really a key part of, of, of government's anti-poverty strategy. Um, our estimates show that about 6 million people are lifted out of poverty because of those small amounts of grants that get paid to those 18 million beneficiaries every month. So it is an expensive system. It is one of the biggest grant systems in the world. But we think it's a particularly effective system in terms of addressing poverty, um, given that 6 million people are then found to be non-poor because of the grants. Mm -hmm. and, and for women, I mean, according to your research, I understand, Prof, that women are more, uh, you know, uh, prone to being, you know, affected by poverty than uh, men. And we, we see this in most households headed by single mothers, you know, women who have so many children or even women who are taking care of the community uh, who are also feeding other kids. How important is this social grant in intervening into their autonomy and their lifestyle and their decision making? Thank you. Yes. So I, I think that that's something that we don't, we don't, we have in the past, we haven't always been drilled down to say who exactly is it that's receiving the money. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, that for the most part, um, the grants are going to women, 60% uh, of old age pensions go to women, not to men, 96% of, of child support grants go to, go to women. And so that gives, gives women some, at least a small amount of money, which they can call their own. And, and so we know that that then promotes decision making within the household it increases women's bargaining power and, and it and it gives them it gives them a, some access to money which they can then also use towards other economic opportunities so it's yeah. very important to think about where does the grant money go a lot of it of course is used directly on the child to to pay for school fees and and to put food on the table but we also know that that women quite often use these grants for example as taxi fare to go and, and go and look for jobs or to pay, pay other people to look after their children while they're able to work. So there's quite an important dynamic system. I think mm. too often we think so you're, either living, um, you're either receiving a grant or you're in the labor market. But in fact, it's, it's important to think about the grant as a springboard for entering the labor market. Yeah, and before I let you go, uh, Prof, uh, perhaps briefly tell me more about the impact of the grants on children, on, you know, nutrition, as well as, you know, assisting them with schooling or even with growth. Yes, so, so there's, there's now quite a large literature which shows that children that receive the child support grant are on average two centimetres taller um, than those that don't receive the grant. Um, that might sound like a small effect, but the nutritionists will tell you that, in fact, that's a massive effect. 
So that then demonstrates to us that in fact, the grants are spent on, on buying food. There's also now new evidence by my colleague, Catherine Eel at the University of Cape Town, where she finds that teenagers that still receive the child support grant are 10 percentage points more likely to stay in school than those that don't receive the child support grant. Now, that's an interesting report, and I appreciate you, of course, joining me this morning, Prof, to share more details about it. Professor Ingrid Woolard from the Stellenbosch Business School, thank you so much for your time this morning.